Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone, this is Rob and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Nice to have you. This is episode 68 and I always have lots to talk about. And today uh, we'll have a little talk about are RVers really minimalists? Well, hello folks. It's been a pretty good week. It's kind of amazing. It was still in Arizona and uh, so at October, almost the end of October. And, uh, it's actually still been pretty warm and almost got to 100 yesterday. and But it's finally, I think, going to start dropping. And good old uh, Halloween's coming up. And Grandma and Grandpa have Halloween trick-or-treat duty with the grandkids. So that'll be fun. I haven't done that forever. See, up in Washington, normally that requires a parka and a uh, <laughs> umbrella. <laughs> but not down here. <laughs> um, you don't even need a sweater. It's... Uh, uh, definitely a lot different than where we come from. But yeah, today I wanted to talk about are our veers really minimalist? And because, uh, you know, you guys are seeing all the videos of living with less and uh, being minimal and it's less stress and all that stuff. And the answer I have to that is I don't think they are. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so I'm watching the snowbirds rolling on in here and. I swear they got their RVs packed, just packed with uh, all kinds of tables and chairs and lights and carpets and uh, grills. And, and some of them have got such you know really fancy grills that they literally have to uh, put them in the back of their trucks. And so, yeah, very serious. But, I mean, I see these guys open up the side <laughs> units of their RVs and I don't know how they can find a thing. I mean, it's packed, just packed. And uh, so this minimalist thing I keep hearing about with RVing is um, I'm going to use the uh, uh, terminology my father would have used, so it's probably not appropriate. But this is those who are doing shows is like yeah, uh, RV living and minimalist living and living on uh, boondocking and stealth camping. My father would have said, "Well, they just don't have a pot to piss in." <laughs> Sorry, but. It's true. It's like, uh, I don't see RVers, at least the highest percentage of them, are trying to be minimalist. They're only minimalist, if you want to call that, only because they're lacking space. But uh, these are just folks that either they still have their cars, they have storage units, maybe they're just staying uh, renting a house somewhere, but or the snowbirds. Even the ones that are living here are totally... Uh, yeah, it's not unusual for them to own three cars and um, have a lot of stuff uh, stored uh, um, in a little trailer or something like that. So it's uh, uh, I'm not seeing this minimalist. I only see it for those that are trying to justify their um, stealth and boon, boon camping lifestyle and uh, trying to get out of... Um, uh, being in the normal day-to-day -day lifestyle of most Americans, and so I, I gotta say that I, uh, I not that I don't believe in minimalist living, and that it's a good thing, and especially if it's eco-friendly, um, that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that, and and a handful of people are doing. It. But I want to remind you, it's a handful of people. I'm certainly not gonna urge people to give up all your stuff and live small and and. You know, only have five shirts that you can rotate every week, uh, something like that. Um, I don't know. That doesn't sound like fun. We didn't uh, grow old to not have the things we want to. This is America. Now, if we were living someplace else, maybe I'd say that. But no, our viewers are not minimalists. Now, you've heard me talk about minimalist living. And, and I do agree that the more stuff you own, the more stress you have because... Like, for example, Sherry and I, we own a boat. So now we have to worry about the boat and where it's packed and whether it's uh, being uh, stored right. And when it's in the water, is it 
okay up there. Maybe we should go up there and take care of it and all that stuff. So, yeah, it creates another stress. <clears throat> Same thing with a, <clears throat> sorry, so, um, with cars or, or, or things we buy, you're responsible for them. And so, yeah, I mean, there there is stress to it, but it's, um, I mean, I mean, you got to have some something you're responsible for, for God, goodness sakes. Maybe that's what the minimal, minimal, <laughs> minimalists want to uh, avoid is responsibility. That makes sense to me. But, uh, yeah, I uh, I don't think you, if, if you're going into RVing and think you have to be a minimalist, the answer to me, uh, I have for that is you don't have to be. And some of these RVs will allow you to have pretty much everything you want when you're traveling. And uh, you can still get in RVs at a reasonable price where you still can keep your house and, or if you want to keep an apartment or something. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you worked hard for all your stuff. And that's okay. And so keep it. And uh, if you got a lot of stuff, well, keep it. And when you croak, the kids can have it. <laughs> and they'll have a lot of stuff. <laughs> But yeah, um, I just uh, I, I just want to make sure that those of you who are thinking about being an RVer, don't think that stereotype that you have to be a minimalist. Uh, I just don't think that's true. So yeah, relax. Let's move on. We got other things to talk about. Well, I got to let you know that we're definitely um, we're. We have, you know, we're sponsored now or supported by Good Music Radio, which is an internet station that we've created, and it's actually designed to actually help support this show. Um, the two shows are not, uh, they don't work together as far as their programs on my program or vice versa. Anyway, but if you get a chance and uh, you've never tried internet radio before, what's really cool about it is if you like the channel you got, you just, you know, down, just go to... Um, goodmusicradio.com there's a little uh, link there it says download the mobile app and you will give you a little music player to put on your uh, cell phone and so you just put your earbuds on and you've got 24 7 music uh they play awesome awesome music from past and present uh, all classic music and it's kind of designed to be music where you kind of go oh wow i haven't heard that in a while anyway it's kind of designed that way and uh Anyway, so we were having a lot of fun with that. You get a chance, check them out, see if you like it. Goodmusicradio.com. And the other thing I wanted to remind everybody is don't forget to go to rvtalkradio.com and give us a shout. I'd uh, love to hear from you. Um, I also, once in a while, we get people that say, we'd like to be on your show, you know, and they're kind of embarrassed to ask or they're kind of shy and they think they're imposing, or, and they're not. It's just we cannot monitor all the channels and stuff out there that are going on and and no you don't have to have a channel if you're just um uh rver that's in the area and you just like to tell your story um especially if it's unusual if it has to do with some of them are medical related some of them are career related some um totally throw throw us and so it's really cool to get the different uh, styles of rving and that's what we're all about the rv living lifestyle um, we're not an RV tips or, uh, oh, well, we, we give tips once in a while and services and stuff like that, but we're more into the lifestyle cause the other shows are doing that. And so we want to make sure that we, we let them stick with their niche. So anyway, uh, but yeah, uh, give us a holler. We'd love to hear from you. Good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, tell us what's going on. Give us comments. Give us ideas for the show. We appreciate it. You can also email me directly at rob at rvtalkradio.com. And that comes directly to me. And you can go to our Facebook pages at RV Talk Radio or RV Travel Buddy. Go up to the top. There's a little button that says message. Shoot us a note there. That goes right to our cell phones. And we actually may answer you right away. So, yeah, give us a holler. We'd love to hear from you. Well, it's kind of funny to watch the different kind of RVers come in, especially the snowbirds. And, you know, we're talking about the minimals living and stuff they carry. And it's really interesting to watch some of them that set up, you know, come in and set up. And some of them will come in and 
Oh my gosh, it was just like an ant pile. Just go, 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 getting all their stuff out. Beautiful carpets, special lighting, fancy chairs, a table. Uh, some of them will actually bring out a full yard setup, uh, table and chairs. And it's like, how did you even carry that? I think they assemble them. And, uh, you know, you can see they're kind of getting ready to set themselves up for three to five months here. And uh, uh, even on their awnings, they'll put a little extension thing on them uh, to help keep the glare of the sun down. And they'll get these special lamps. And uh, some of them have special uh, mosquitoes, mosquito candles. And uh, 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 it's amazing. It's like, huh? And then, you know, they're setting up their television. They got all these dish things. And some of them are, will pull out plants. And it's like, wow. Um, and then the next guy will pull up, do hang out. And then they're hanging out just as long. And literally, my neighbor here uh, I'm looking at doesn't even have a chair out. Um, and he, he's a smoker too, so he'll come out and just sit on the step of his motorhome. But it's like they just don't want to get comfortable. And so I, I find that kind of interesting. Um, how everybody, uh, uh, how people try to turn their RVs into their home and settlement, you might say. And and that's human nature, I believe. But um, every once in a while, somebody will just kind of throw you and go, huh, they're not putting anything out. No rugs, no nothing, no chairs, nothing. Uh, I think my neighbor, he does have one t a little table out. And only because I saw him pull out his uh, barbecue ones. And it's one of the little ones. And the same kind of one we got, the little grilled things. But yeah, it's... Um, and then... Others, they even get more elaborate with their dogs. Uh, like here, they'll let you put up the little fences. So they'll have these elaborate little fences around their RVs so their little dogs can run outside. and uh, Which is probably good so they're not running out in the road and stuff. But, and, uh, uh, it's, I, I just, I, I would love to hear some of the stories that you guys uh, see of some of these people that come in with their, especially the snowbirds, how elaborate their setups are. Um, and like when we walk around at night, they're outside and they got these special little tents with little walls on them that have screening to keep the bugs out with their outdoor television systems and, uh, uh, having, a, I assume a nip or at least a drink of some sort and enjoying the evenings, which is really cool. And that's what it's all about. But once again, it's like some of the inventions even that you see and, um, and there's other folks who'll come down here with sports cars separate from whatever rig they're pulling or whatever and then uh, they're covered and it's like they come down the down the phoenix so they can drive their corvettes and special cars or sportsters um, um down here that apparently they come from places where you the weather isn't as good for that so it's like five months of enjoying phoenix and nice weather and bringing your sports car down and uh and, and same thing with special motorcycles and can-ams and things like that so, yeah, it's really amazing. But, yeah, I'd love to hear your stories of what you've been seeing lately. And uh, um, the, the fun part is usually the people who bring all that stuff out are really sociable people, too. So it's almost like, uh, and then, of course, we all know about happy hour. So um, usually if people are out and about um, at 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, also means it's probably a good time to have a nip or good good time to go meet your neighbors here it's a little bit later because it cools off uh, so it's more like six to seven but um yeah please please uh let us know uh what you're seeing out there uh, I, I find it quite humorous and and fun and uh, gives other people ideas too so yeah nothing wrong with it of course the other thing it kind of throws you is like for example we got a person that's next to us that has a trailer I bet you it's not more than 23, 24 foot trailer. And I got to meet them, really nice people. And I guess they're just taking a year off and uh, traveling the United States, which is cool. But what was amazing in this little trailer, they come walking out with two dogs. One was a Great Dane, and another one I think was just a regular lab. Oh my, um, my, I mean, the, how they get those two into that trailer in themselves, it's a couple. Uh, must get quite interesting, but Great Danes are actually quite 
they say Great Danes are like a great apartment dogs and stuff because they're kind of, I don't want to, I don't like the word, but they're kind of lazy. They're eat, laid back kind of dogs. So, uh, yeah, they're not, um, they can be a great um, small living area dog, even though they're gigantic. Um, and then I was laughing at them because I'm at the dog park and they're just like me. He goes like, yeah, if I'm going to have to pick up poop, give me something to work with. <laughs> he's got a lot more to work with than I do with Cinder but yeah big so somebody and then other rigs would come in with three little dogs and a cat and it's like wow and uh and it's a total madhouse and it's like wow I I don't get that sometimes but um if they're taking good care of them and the animals are happy I guess that's that's all it's that's what it's all about but um but yeah, yeah, I do find the little dogs can be quite irritating. Um, they, they can be quite yappy, but uh, big dogs can do it too. But it's, uh, usually the little ones, they hear the wrong sounds and yap, 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 and it can be all night long. And uh, so I do want to remind people out there is if you have a dog that's yappy and you guys are going out to dinner and stuff, it can be quite irritating that you might want to try one of those bark collars that just spray a little water on them and stuff, not the electrical ones. Um, to help control that barking and you can get little cam um, webcams uh, very inexpensive to put in your rig to kind of see if uh, if your dog is doing that because it, it really you should we are living kind of close to each other and it is important that we all get along and we try to be respectful of our neighbors and uh, the other thing is crazy here as I'm looking out my window is I'm watching four hummingbirds just fighting for the, and we got three three feeders out there now. My my wife, it's like a full time job every morning to fill all those feeders, and then of course the cat's at the window about ready to have a heart attack again. But uh, yeah, uh, if you get a chance to get a hummingbird feeder, <laughs> that's even funner. But yeah, those are a lot of work if you get a lot of hummingbirds because they're kind of little pigs. But anyway, that's uh, that's what's going on in the RV park. Uh, love to hear for your comments on what's going on in yours. Well, as promised, I told you I was going to do this again, and I thought it was kind of fun. Is uh, let's see how old I can make you feel. So, one of my first questions for you on <laughs> something that you may not remember the date on is: Do you remember when? John Lennon was assassinated. And think about that for a minute. It would have been December 8th of 1980. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's been a while. That would be like uh, 36 years ago. Man. Okay, I got another one for you. Ready? In fact, I think I'm going to use another uh, singing star. So this one might be a little harder to remember, and I, I don't remember. i got to look it up. But um, the uh, question is, when did, uh, and all of us remember, John Denver? And he, he died in a plane crash because he was actually very interested in flying, and he was flying an experimental aircraft. I believe in uh, California coast uh, he crashed. And so anyway, the answer to that is, well, do you remember? It's October 13th of 1997, which is like, what, uh, 19 years ago? Wow. So uh, he, it'd be amazing if he still was alive today, what kind of songs he would have come up with um, during that time, because he, he had some really neat stuff. But okay, we got one more. We're going to do three of these, so here we go. All right, here's a good one for you. When was the first microwave oven invented and became commercialized? And the answer to that is... Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I was going to ask you what company, too. Okay, ready? 1967. I was only seven years old. And it was uh, introduced by the uh, Ameri Corporation. And... Uh, Anyway, well, obviously the rest was history. I remember when those first came out, they were not cheap. I think a, a big size one was like seven to 
seven hundred dollars to a thousand bucks. Now you can get one for twenty nine ninety five out of Walmart. <laughs> so, but yeah, in fact, when Sherry and I were married in nineteen eighty, that was our wedding gift that our parents uh, you know we spent big bucks on. Both of our parents bought microwaves for us, so we had to actually take one back. But uh, I think one was a Litton, and another one was. Uh, I don't remember uh, what the other one was, but anyway, um, yeah, it was a big deal to have a microwave in your house, and now uh, uh, being a young couple, we were really happy to have one, and so thanks to our parents, but yeah, 1967, but uh, yeah, I guess it took a while for them to, get in, to make them really commercial, so yeah, that's how it is, but yeah, it's kind of fun to think about those things, uh, even uh, names and expressions of things that... Uh, we use even at age 30 40 and 50 uh you know the millennials look at us like would you hear that <laughs> so it's kind of kind of interesting to see how times are changing but uh uh boy times are going to be changing after the election eh so yeah i'm not going to take a side on that stuff but um, I do have a little beef about some of that uh healthcare stuff i guess it's going up another 25% and uh, I saw some numbers come across that were just like, oh my goodness. And, and it's, the numbers, not only are they high, but so are the deductibles and stuff. So what's the point? So once again, it seems like that healthcare system set up where the middle class, us, have to pay the big bucks for it. So the folks that are low income can get it and get government assistance. So that didn't work out too well <laughs> except for minimalists i guess <laughs> so anyway yeah i'll that's all i'll say about that but um health that's that's definitely me and sherry's pet peeve all right let's move on yeah so sherry's got some new hobby that she's been doing and i think i might have mentioned it before in uh, prior shows but she, um, her mother actually started doing this is, um, and, and I'm sure you've heard of this, but starting to color and, uh, not kind of, not like our kids do, but a little bit more intricate. And so nowadays you can go to bookstores, um, and even, uh, like targets and Walmarts have them too, but I've noticed the bookstores have got more elaborate ones, but so uh, Sherry found one that, um, at, a bookstore and we got a set of uh, pencil you know colored pencils and then we also got a set of um, ink ones too from Target and uh, Sherry's not a big hobbyish kind of thing and her job can be kind of it's hard to switch her brain off because she's an accounting controller and so uh, she's really taken in that pretty well and so she's taken it uh, she's has it here in the RV a lot and she's taking it up in the boat, too. And it seems to be, I don't want to say therapy, but it seems like a good way to switch your brain off if you're one of those people that have a hard time shutting off uh, um, things that you do, uh, whether you're doing volunteer work or have regular jobs um, or just businesses where you just need to have something uh, change, make your brain change gears, uh, coloring is uh working out really good for sherry and it looks like fun I, I, it's not something i i'm it, well i'm kind of thinking it'd be nice but i have a hard time sitting down that long and doing something like that <laughs> but uh uh yeah that seems like to be something that you might want to consider if you were thinking about um doing some kind of coloring <clears throat> or trying to find something to you know, some people like crossword puzzles or word searches and things like that. But the coloring seems like a kind of a, a nice thing that uh, make you feel good. So, yeah, something to consider. Coloring. Another thing I noticed beyond uh, good old Craigslist and, and eBay is I've noticed if you, if you go into your Facebook and in your local area, at least we're find, I'm finding them here like in Fountain Hills. We're near Fountain Hills. We found a Facebook page that is for classifieds. And what's kind of neat about them is they're kind of more personal. And so uh, I've noticed that uh, a few friends of ours that are around uh, around here 
and I made sure and I liked the pages so I can see what's going on have actually posted like little things like uh, our neighbor uh, had something they got from the casino uh, it was like a vase or a cookie jar type thing and they put it into the Fountain Hills Facebook page classifieds and sold it pretty quickly um, got like 20 bucks for it so it was like wow so it might be you know if you're into that kind of thing that people like to find things or Go to garage sales, find little uh, little treasures, and then like to resell them and see if they can get more money for them, which can be a really fun hobby. Um, uh, try Facebook too, not just the old Craigslist and not the old eBay thing, but just uh, uh, look for um, items for sale or for sale items in the location that you're at. Do a search in your Facebook and see if there's some groups, and they're usually group uh, pages that you can join that you can post products in there that you have that you like to sell. Uh, looks like a pretty neat way to go, and it seemed like that worked really well for our neighbor. And uh, I never really considered trying to sell items on Facebook, but uh, uh, it seems to work, and it's great because you can put, you know, pretty a good explanation of what it is, a good picture, and uh, you can still not give away your location right away um, uh, on Facebook. I mean, people will know who you are and they'll know that the general location, but you don't have to give a phone number out or anything like that. And they can contact you on the little message button on the top of your Facebook page and uh, get dialogue going that way. So, uh, yeah, it seems kind of safe, kind of secure. So, uh, might be something you want to try if you're into that kind of stuff. And then uh, this is, I, I'm going to call this my miscellaneous kind of section in this show, but the other thing I wanted to remind people of is I get, I know I have people that have uh, products or services that they uh, have, and it may not be totally RV related. Uh, if you'd like to create a audio commercial for either this show, if it's RV related, or we told you earlier that we're sponsored and we own um, Good Music Radio. Since that's a new show, I mean, if you're willing to um, help develop a commercial and it's beneficial to you and it's tasteful and it's beneficial to the new show, uh, in a lot of cases, we'll be willing to put some of those on these shows for uh, free or some kind of trade. Um, so yeah, uh, if if you ever thought about that, if you've got a business that, and it doesn't have to be RV related, give us a holler, contact us. It's a good opportunity for you and it helps us. It's a win-win for everybody. And those that we have working for us that are, are um, practicing or making um, a promo page and stuff of uh, sample um, commercials, we, they love doing those kind of show, those kind of commercial, because uh, they can put them in their portfolios. So yeah, uh, give us a holler on that stuff. Just contact us and say I'd be interested. In, like, uh, can I advertise my, um, I don't know, uh, some kind of bird building house built, uh, bird house building or something. And uh, especially if you can ship things, uh, it's like yeah, we can uh, we can accommodate something like that. So you may not be able to put them on both shows, but uh, we'll put them where they're applicable. But yeah, give us a holler on that. And so uh, uh, maybe you're a, um, uh, I, like I said, there's so many little businesses out there. Just if it rings a bell and you go, I wouldn't mind doing that. Just contact us and we'll see what we can work out. It'd be kind of, it's fun and uh, it's good for, like I said, everybody. So yeah, well, let's uh, move on to a new subject. The next subject I'd like to talk about is flags. Yep, flags. And uh, we have one, and if you watch some of our videos once in a while, we'll take a picture of it uh, if the wind's blowing really neat. And it kind of looks, especially with a sunset or something. But there's a gentleman, well, a couple, that are a couple rows down from us that have quite the intricate flagpole in the front of their fifth wheel. And they uh, actually display uh, several different kind of flags. Um, and uh, it's kind of fun because uh, when you drive by, you go, what flag do they have up today? And uh, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a fun little hobby. So if you ever considered 
Uh, you can get elaborate with your flagpole or you can get one kind of pre-made from Camping World. I've actually got kind of a cheaper one. And amazingly enough, it's very tough in high winds. And we get a lot of winds here. And it's been very durable. Um, my RV Travel Buddy flag we had up for quite a while. And remember, it's sunshine and uh, stuff. And it finally faded out to a point where it's like, all right, I have two of them. And so our new one is our RV Talk radio flag. And um, I'd like to get um, more different kinds of flags just for the fun of it. But nice hobby. See, I mean, really, if you're into certain states or uh, uh, POW support, I uh, actually even see Civil War flags. I know that's controversial. but um, And then there's some other ones. And so it's kind of neat to drive by and go, which ones you got up today? And then try to figure out which one it is. And so you can have fun with the neighborhood, too. And it can be a nice little hobby, and uh, not to mention, good, uh, you can put a good old um, fashioned American flag up um, res respectfully. And um, I think the big things with those you got to remember is uh, to try uh, try to support when there's uh, half mask kind of situations going on. So you have a little more responsibility with that. But with your normal flags, uh, typically you're okay to uh, just leave them at full mass. But um, yeah, I mean, they're really easy to put on. They can go on every rig. You can either have them mounted onto your ladder or the back of your fifth wheel. The, these guys have literally have their flagpole in the front of their fifth wheel. And an interesting kind of ground bracket thing that they've done. Um, so they've got a pretty beefy pole. And so it's a, it's a lot beefier than mine. And then I also see some people that actually have uh, solar lights pointing up towards the flag. So they're lit up at night. So it's like, <laughs> like I said, some people really get into this stuff. So along with all that furniture they brought, they bring their flag poles and, and then store away you know, another 20 or 25 flags that they can rotate on their uh, uh, flag pole. And some people just put one flag up for us it's always going to be rv travel buddy or rv talk radio because we you know it's just seems like the right thing to do when you got a company like ours but uh flag poles it's uh something you might want to get into it's a nice hobby and it's not that expensive but a good flag pole could set you back over 100 bucks up to 200 um or you can make your own that can break down that's easy just remember just make it easy on yourself and you know to break down and um, and be able to carry around uh, to the different locations that you go to. But um, I just think that'd be a fun hobby. The next little hobby I was going to tell you about, I actually just discovered, and I'm kind of thinking, I don't know if a lot of people know about this, but for example, we've told you about the radio station Good Music Radio. And I, I, I'm bringing it up only because as we dive into things, we learn new things that are going, I didn't know that existed. So another thing that you could actually pull off in your RV, and if you're into this kind of stuff, is making um, radio station jingles. Not the kind that, I know some of you will laugh that uh, watch Nomadic Fanatic thing in the, back in the old days, but... Uh, what I'd like to ask you to do is is get on the internet and type in radio station jingles or radio station IDs. And uh, you probably never really thought about this when you listen to the radio, but you'll hear them, like there'll be a station ID and there might be some people in the background going, yeah, I listen to them all the time and blah, blah, blah. And, and there'll be this funny noise or different sounds of music. or And, and there's companies that actually collect soundtracks of uh, I don't know how they're getting them of the different singers like Britney Spears or something going um, where they'll say uh, yeah I listen to them all the time or uh, yeah rock and roll all the time from aerospace or something uh, aerospace, <laughs> aerosmith <laughs> and, oh man <laughs> so uh, uh, to do that really would only take like a mixer board uh, computer software of some sort um, because really what you're trying to do is distort your voice uh, play, you know, chop up music and sounds and for example uh, and how that would work is let's say my company would come along and say okay I need uh, 10 um, station IDs so uh, examples of that would be uh, you're listening to good music radio and maybe some comment of like uh, well, the greatest hits, only the best country, blah, blah, blah. 
uh, little little snippets and so but only with more jazz and maybe some reverb in it and music in the background and and um, anyway and so we would do station IDs jingles would be little uh, sayings and things like that like you're listening to great music all day or 24 7 rock hits classic hits all day and uh, or morning shows and things like that and so people pay for that <laughs> Some companies will pay for that and uh i'm kind of thinking man i might just uh you know i do have a mixer board but it's for a podcast but uh, a little bit more intricate one where you really can blend your your sounds and music and distort uh voices and things like that and you put up a website and then you start building your portfolio and companies like ours are the kind where you want to contact us and say Hey, I'm trying to build a portfolio. Can I do a couple commercials? Or uh, and yeah, not to mention you could do commercials for other people too. Um, especially if you just got that sound that people like. Um, and I, a lot of people can do this. And uh, uh, remember, if you're, you're worried about your voice, you're gonna you can distort it and and make it interesting. Uh, so yeah, that's a my. Not a bad little business, I would say, to get into. I don't know. Might be able to make some extra bucks. And I mean, you get, you'd have to hit the bricks a little bit and, and push your stuff, but um, and create a website and uh, you know have samples and things like that. But take a lot of work. But uh, it might be a nice little thing to be on the road with. So something to consider. Um, soundtrack uh, development, I guess, or making jingles. Um, it's there's companies out there that are doing that, and so I'm looking at them, and I'm going, wow, <laughs> I could hire a company, make all kinds of cool soundtracks, or try to do them myself. And uh, I'm kind of thinking, I'm, if I really just cracked down and got the right equipment, I could do it myself. And I'm almost got pretty much the equipment now to do at least a pretty good job with some of that stuff. So, <laughs> you know, food for thought. So, uh, speaking of electronic stuff now, I also wanted to bring up... I'm all over the place in this sh this show today. <laughs> so, hey, at least you never know what I'm going to talk about. So, I want to talk about... And I'm going to be talking to a handful of people. And what I want to talk to is those people that are still smoking. And that's always like, oh my God, here it comes. I'm going to get preached at. No, you're not. So... Let's talk about that for a minute, and at least I'll tell you what I've done that's been successful, and hopefully you can relate. But uh, I smoked for a good 35, 30 to 35 years since I was, uh, I used to work on fishing boats in um, Westport back in the 70s, and that's what you did is party, drink, and smoke cigarettes. Anyway, so uh, I was a probably a pack a day kind of smoker. So I officially have not smoked a cigarette, and I'm going on four years, and that's a miracle. That's amazing. Uh, I tried did all kinds of things throughout the years, and um, I, just, I just I used to smoke in my house in the old days and things like that. It's just I go, oh my god. Anyway, um, but uh, the realities about. Four years ago, as you guys have heard, that I've been a, uh, I'm a score dance caller too, and I did a little one night show for a group of people, and I realized, and I hadn't done it for a while, that I was coughing and wheezing, and my throat was sore. I could hardly, you know, I could, used to be able to do that for hours and no problem, and I was going, and I noticed I just coughed a lot, <clears throat> so. Uh, that was the final little straw. So I actually, I was uh, at the doctor's and I actually convinced them to let me get um, that um, uh, medication called uh, Chantix. That w <laughs> little brain. Anyway, so I, uh, I actually bought it. I think it was like $35, just short of $40, I believe. And I sat on it and then I had the box of, around the house for a couple of months. And like I said, it wasn't until I did that one show where I had to do some singing and realized that um, uh, either I'm getting old or I got to quit smoking. And so I finally, at the first of the year of that year, I started taking that stuff. And 
people, I don't know, I keep hearing people all worried about the side effects. I can tell you I had no side effects from that Chantix at all. Uh, nothing whatsoever. I mean, it didn't affect me at all. Other than the fact, it did somehow magically make the transition much easier. So I found with smoking is I didn't so much miss the smoking as I missed the habit. And, I, I, and, and smokers were related to this. I like smoking. Why? Because a lot of times, like, <clears throat> like this show, I'll be talking and it's like, all right, I need to stop for a minute and think through what I want to do in the next module. And so it's nice to like go outside and have a smoke and take five, ten minutes to clear your head. And, uh, and, and it's also true with like web design and things like that. A lot of kind of work that I do, it's nice to stop, clear your head and get a new battle plan. And so I've always enjoyed smoking for that reason. I know that's a bad excuse. I'm not trying to fill the excuses, but I can tell you one thing as a smoker and those who are trying to smoke and know they should quit smoking is this isn't preaching. I know what you're going through. It's tough. However, uh, I can't see I'm like a true non-smoker because I also, uh, what saved me was the vapor. So this is where it brings back to electronics. So um, I still vapor. Some people call it vape or whatever, but it's electronic cigarette, but it's, they're not, they don't look like cigarettes, what I'm using, but you can get some that look like cigarettes. And let me tell you, first of all, the savings of maybe $300 a month in not buying cigarettes is is shows up in your wallet quick. You'd be amazed when you can uh, keep a $20 bill in your wallet for more than a couple of days instead of stopping at a little 7-Eleven to keep having to buy a pack of smokes. Um, I, to I totally understand that. The other thing uh, um, is the coughing and wheezing went away pretty quick. And so with the Chantix, I switched over to, uh, and it took a while to find the kind of the equipment that I like that worked for me. I find that everybody's a little different, a different kind of vapor thing. I actually have a large battery with a what they call a tank, and I, I used to be a menthol smoker, so I got I use something that has a menthol taste to it. Um, and other people they like the different flavors where you can get all kinds of flavors. Anyway, so it takes a while to kind of home in on, on one, what you like there. But I can tell you one thing, it doesn't irritate people. Um, and your your car will smell good again. You can actually vapor inside your RV or home, and it's nobody will know. Um, I think the only drawback is uh, you do get a little bit of a film on your windows in your car. But nobody smells cigarettes, no funny smells. You don't smell like cigarettes. Um, you'll feel better, yet you still are fulfilling the habit. And that's really what it is, is that habit. And a lot of us who have been smokers for a long time like that five, ten minute break to clear our minds. And you go, I don't want to give that up. Well, you don't have to. You can even go out with your buddies who still smoke and use your vapor. And you don't feel weird at all. And uh, you actually have quite a few advantages. I even noticed the other day I was in a... Uh, casino and we're waiting for your uh, um, uh, get called for uh, to eat at a restaurant so we, uh, right outside of that was the non-smoking area of, uh, of the casino and the little signs are saying uh, this is a non-smoking area except for I couldn't believe what I read electronic cigarettes are okay I'm going whoa cool so uh, anyway uh, um, you know, really, you could get away with using the electronic cigarettes in other places, but you, you still got that stereotype you got to deal with and not to offend other people. Like, I occasionally will see uh, uh, somebody vaporing, and usually it's young folks that don't care about others, you know, walking around in Target and using it or uh, in a restaurant and things like that. And it's just not appropriate, uh, whether the fact that it doesn't have a smell to it and it doesn't. You know, isn't doesn't smell like a cigarette or anything. Uh, still, if you want to get people to accept folks that at least do the vaporing, you need to also uh, respect uh, certain areas like eating areas and public places. That um, 
just you know to be appropriate. Uh, you're not gonna, you shouldn't offend anybody if you're in a park, uh, even though cigarette smokers can't smoke in a lot of parks now and things like that. But um, and then a lot of times the same rules apply to both, and you can't use it in an airplane or something like that. And no, I you do not have trouble carrying your batteries or your tank uh, um, on an airplane. I, I I was cautious of that and found I was not a problem at all. You still got to make sure and show it, especially the liquid. Anyway, uh, much more affordable, um, easy to maintain, much better lifestyle. And then the other thing is uh, uh, you can use the juice to reduce the nicotine as you go. And I literally went from, you know, I think 24 milligrams to 12 down to 6. And now I only use 3 and sometimes 0 and mix the two. And so when I decide I just don't want to use the vaporing for more than a day, uh, my body isn't going nuts or nothing. It's, it's kind of a nice feeling, and I feel better. I'm not coughing as much and things like that. So if that's helpful to just one of my listeners, then I've been successful. Uh, it's kind of like the pet thing. If we talked a lot about the pets and the vaccines, if it helps one dog live a little longer, then great. I hope I've been helpful. So hope that helps you with uh, thinking that if you're trying to quit smoking, uh, there's... The Chantix did work for us. I think you could get away without the Chantix and go into the vaporing uh, with an open mind and, and realize you got to find the right equipment, the right kind of vapor equipment that suits your needs and makes fulfills your uh, your uh, habit, you might say. So, And finding the right flavor and things like that. But yeah, there you go. Last thing I kind of like to talk about today is RV living in general. And, and one of the biggest observations, and I sometimes I have to kind of stop and think about it, but so, you know, we told you guys that for five years we were kind of stuck doing a nine to five up in the Washington area, and we lived in an apartment, and we very rarely had a chance to meet anybody. Uh, well, I mean, there was exceptions to that, but we did meet a few folks, but... And we certainly never, very rarely had a chance to go out to dinner with anybody because we really didn't know anybody. And we were in this area and working at a business, um, aerospace up there, and uh, around lots of people. And we were just in our own world. And well, not that we didn't want to be, it's just um, you get kind of secluded and you get kind of in your routine. And um, it was really only the weekends that we really meet folks. Uh, especially you know, we did a lot of extended RVing, so we kept our RV in a different location and go up there every weekend. So I got to thinking here the other day, and it's like, in the time short, I haven't been here a year, <clears throat> and uh, amazingly, I mean, uh, almost almost weekly, we go out to dinner with some couple, or... Um, just yak with one another, and uh, some and we've actually been outside where someone will come around and is like, well, uh, sit down, and you know we always keep extra chairs in front of the RV, and I our social network, you might say, um, has changed so much, and and I almost had to learn how to do it. It was like I almost have forgotten what it was like to go out to dinner with other people, and. Um, and socialize and, and take time to visit and, and uh, exchange ideas. And, and so anyway, so if there's anything I really want to compliment about the RV lifestyle is how much easier it is to run into people, especially if you got a pet, because we meet a lot of people in the uh, uh, pet park. But, I mean, just walking around the area uh, and eventually you just kind of, uh, sometimes it takes you say, "Oh, I'm going to walk tonight," and so, <laughs> and maybe you'll go a quarter mile in, in in an hour if you're lucky, because you keep stopping to talk to people. Nice problem, really nice problem. Anyway, so one of the things I guess you can look forward to if you do decide to do an RV, and then if you're only a snowbird or just doing it part time, or even extension RVs, um, there's a real perk right there is to integrate yourself with people again uh get you know i'm not talking facebook's and all these other things i'm talking about real people talking real conversations shaking hands uh 
things like that. Uh, let, uh, I have one gal that comes out and says, can Cinder come play? And <laughs> would take Cinder to the park just so that the dogs could play. It's just cute stuff like that. And some of it can be kind of irritating, too. So sometimes you just don't want to be bothered. Uh, or uh, like me, I got a, a radio show, and I've had people knock on the door while I'm doing this show. And uh, I never get upset. Um, uh, it's just, I'm grateful that someone's actually wants to knock on my door and visit with us. So what an awesome thing. And and it wasn't like that before. Not because we didn't want it. It's just the lifestyle. Even when I remember owning a houses, and I've owned houses for 25 years, there's times that you just, sometimes uh, uh, we were in neighborhoods that we really didn't know our neighbors at all. And then there's others where we actually were kind of close with our neighbors. Um, but even that, that was kind of still secluded. So, yeah, um, it wasn't until when you did something with the community, something you realize, oh, you're my neighbor? <laughs> it's so, it's terrible. So, I know, I just want to make, uh, you know, you always hear me hear the pros and cons of uh, RV living. Um, and uh, I'll bring up the, uh, I, I bring some stuff up just for the controversy of it. Uh, doesn't mean I necessarily believe it, uh, like when we're talking about the minimalist stuff. Um, um, it's fun to talk about, and it's really fun to hear people's opinions. But I gotta tell you, when it comes to the RV lifestyle, if one of the things you're lacking in your life is integrating with other people, uh, having a good laugh, picking up a few new friends, going out to dinner with different folks, uh, sometimes you only just you find out you're not really clicking that much. It's still, it was an, you'll probably still have a really nice dinner. It doesn't mean you have to always go out with the same people. Um, once again, there's the overkill too, where you might meet somebody you don't want to go out to dinner with and stuff. But um, uh, that doesn't happen that often. But yeah, big perk. So get out of here, get some new friends. Well, it's that time again. It's getting to the end of the show. Did I ever mention to you guys that we really appreciate you? Every week we keep growing a little bit, and uh, uh, people don't see our statistics that much because it's the podcast part that we see, and uh, we get those reports um, um, every, you know, all the time. And every week it's just getting better and better, and I, I, I got to thank you folks for. Uh, visiting us uh, and we do appreciate the feedback we get uh, we're not always dead on and sometimes we're just having fun with you but this should that's what this show is all about the RV lifestyle and RV living and uh, uh, we're just one example of it and then we try to tell you what we see around us and, uh, and a lot of it's very truthful and and uh, you'll notice um, when you watch some of these shows, they sound really one-sided, like everyone's doing it. And it's not true. It's just not true at all. Uh, everyone's doing it differently in, in their own way. And that's what we our message is all about. If you decide to be an RVer, do it your way. And no, you don't have to be a minimalist. And no, you don't have to sell your home. And uh, can you enjoy all this and... and give up everything and all that uh, yeah <laughs> and uh, it can also be a great tool and if you have a health issue and need to get cancer uh, treatment uh, rv is a great way to go to another state to get something like that done on and on and on but yeah that's what we're all about and thank you and don't forget to contact us we'd love to hear from you and i hope uh, that you continue to stay with us for episode 69 uh, we come out every Monday. Make sure to set up your cell phone to listen to podcasts. There's a lot of great podcasts out there. So we support them all. And no, uh, we're not offended if you're listening to other RV shows and stuff. We, uh, we know there's some really good ones out there. We highly uh, support them. And they do have some great shows. And I hope you can say the same about our show. So I want to tell everybody to please be safe out there. Um, don't get caught up in this stereotype and just do it your way. I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. See you next Monday. Thanks for listening. Bye now. Bye.